you can hear me properly and if you can uh, uh, see me. So if you can type it in the chat. All clear. Awesome. Samantha. Perfect. Everybody's all good. Awesome. And another thing would be too that if you do encounter any difficulty and you it does freeze or something glitches, just re reload your screen and, and it should work. Oh, that's so thank you. <laughs> I didn't see that comment. What were you saying? Oh. You can hear me perfect. Oh, with the with the click all time. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Where is everybody from? Some people might not know me, so I'm Chrissy. So before we start, because we have a, a, just about a minute till we get um, everybody coming in. Um, Vancouver, love Vancouver. Halifax, Mexico, Bianca, how are you? Welcome. Um, Fredericton, New, ooh, Halifax. It's going by so fast. South Florida, welcome, uh, Renee. Uh, New Fredericton, Halifax, a lot of, yeah, from Newfoundland, Cape Breton, welcome, welcome, Cheryl, some of the names that I see, I see from other webinars, so thank you for attending again, Fort McMurray, Sheila, Timmins, Shania Twain, so every time I, I remember, like I hear Timmins, <laughs> I, I think of Shania Twain, which is a good thing, uh, Hamilton, Kentville, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is beautiful too. A lot of beautiful places here. Awesome. So we're just about Edmonton. Perfect. Hope everyone's doing well too in this time that we're uh, dealing with. And I know in some of these, if you're from the U.S., a lot of your um, businesses have already reopened, I believe, in certain areas. Like I know Georgia, it's already happened. There is a um, list of what states have opened. Nova Scotia, perfect. Um, can you press? Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So, um, I was going to say again. I was going to say, so some yes have opened. And as well, um, here in Canada, I think some provinces might be opening in, in next week, probably 18th or 19th. So, I don't know. Let me know in the uh, comments if you're. Uh, coming if you're opening up soon in some of your provinces as well Nova Scotia perfect so we're gonna start so what's gonna happen so we're gonna put the full screen right so it'll see comments so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put up the PowerPoint presentation and what will happen is I won't be able to see any of the uh, questions at the moment so if we can ref like refrain from asking questions now leave it towards the end of the presentation and then I can answer everybody's questions uh, because then the, our presentation can flow properly and then I, I won't be able to see the questions at the moment the way we're sharing the screen so um, also after this webinar you should be getting uh, an email and I put the link in as well so of the recording so you should be getting that as well um, so let's Start. Let's start the presentation. Okay. Give us one second to share the the screen. So while we're setting that up, I also just wanted to say for anybody who's like new new coming to this um, webinar or to reflect us all to begin with, my name is Chrissy. And I am the head trainer for North America for Refectisil. So I do a lot of these webinars. If you already attended the past ones, you've seen that we did on the lift, the brow lift, which is really trending right now. Uh, we did the, the lash lift, the lash curl. We'll have a lot of these webinars repeat again. Uh, sorry? Can you see the screen um, that's on the, on your, the screen that's on your screen? Can you see this? Yes, perfect. Yes, Bianca can see it. You are sharing. Okay, and then we're going to pop up the presentation. A five, okay. Perfect. So hopefully everybody can see that because I can't see your comments. Um, so as I was mentioning, I, my name is Chrissy Parashos and I am the head trainer for North America for Refectasil. And we do, uh, I do a lot of these trainings. Uh, I go to schools, I do a lot of trade shows. Uh, I have a real nice passion for, for Refectasil. I enjoy a lot. 
and I love the versatility of Refectisil. And a lot of you are probably already using Refectisil when it comes to your lash tinting, your brows tinting, very common for many, many years because Refectisil has been around for over uh, for 70 years. So <clears throat> some of you might be already using it for uh, 10, 10, 20 years. Uh, so uh, what I like about Refectisil as well is the innovation, you know, uh, staying up with the trends. And now that you can, with this webinar today, you'll be able to learn how you can expand that service of just not brows and lashes and how you can uh, mater, uh, cater, sorry, cater to the male clientele. And today's webinar will be talking mostly about beard grooming, which include the mustache too. Uh, but then afterwards, uh, what can we do with maybe the lift and the curl? Can you introduce that to your male clientele as well? So we're going to start with the presentation. And once again, if, if there's any new, new people that signed in just right now, uh, if you have any issues with the um, screen, anything glitches, just reload your page and it should go back to normal. Okay, so let us start with the presentation. Give me one second. Okay, so the content for our uh, webinar today. A little bit of history of beards, some cute facts I saw, some fun facts that I saw as well, but to know the history of beards, to understand why maybe some men might want to have a beard. Uh, beard tinting, the color typing, how do you, you know, choose the right uh, color for your client's beard. Uh, color mixing, what colors can you mix if they're cool tone or warm tone? Application, how's the proper application? And then care, uh, just like your brows, just like your lashes, we provide an aftercare for them. The beard should as well because it's been processed and a lot more hair, so we wanna give them that slick, nice shine as well to their, um, to the beard. Any special tips uh, when it comes to reddish beards? which that's all big common, um, I guess you can say issue that uh, uh, males go through is that their hair color might be a nice darker color, like their natural hair might be dark uh, or brown or but then what comes out in their beards, it's a lot of that reddish tone and it doesn't mix well with their ha hair or they don't like that uh, brassy or that reddish uh, tone that's in their beard. Some people might even have like a tricolor. They'll have brown, that reddish tone and even black or even some gray. Uh, so we want to be able to, as well, cover, have uh, great coverage for male, uh, for male beards. Uh, then we're going to talk about shaping and introducing this amazing uh, gel wax from Caron Lab called Bravado and how you can use this not just for shaping brows precisely, but also for male group uh, grooming, where you will avoid any drip, any mess, any oops moment, as I always say, uh, if you drip it in place that you shouldn't. This wax is amazing for getting that precision. Uh, and for male male grooming, when some, some males take good care of their of their beards, they love that accurate shaping, that uh, precision of the hairs, how they're uh, uh, just like you would wax your brows. Okay, and give them that shape. Then we're gonna talk about lift and curl. How can that benefit your male clientele? Your final touches, and then any home care and talking about that brow bar. So the history of beards, this is pretty interesting. So uh, we're going back to here, as you can see into the prehistoric uh, time when it says that growing a beard has been a sign of manly manliness since the dawn of time. And scientists believe prehistoric men had beards for warmth, intimidation and protection, as we can see in that little uh, diagram right there for intimidation uh, through a thicker, stronger looking jawline, uh, for protection and cushion from punches or dull blows to the face, it's interesting, and then warmth and keeping sensitive mouth skin safe from elements. So it's interesting um, from the history why beards were, were worn. In ancient civilization, beards were a sign of honor and they were cut only as a punishment. And then we have the third example is around 345 BC, Alexander the Great decreed that soldiers could not have beards. He was afraid of enemies pulling beards in, in, the, in battle. So that was one of the points of not having a beard, right? But now we go to some facts, I guess you can say, which I found pretty interesting. So since then, beards have regularly cycled in and out of fashion, separating men from boys for centuries. So there's some uh, facts in there that says that two thirds uh, women found full beard, bearded men to be as attractive as clean shaven men. Or how about more 
more men tend to have facial hair when the marriage market is good. Um, it's really interesting facts. And then when it comes to success outside relationship, 98%. Uh, oh, wait, I didn't see that one. Sorry, I think I might be missing something. But these are just, uh, uh, I guess you could say uh, the study of facial hair and some of the facts that they found when uh, uh, beards were were present or beards were not present. So it's pretty interesting. I wanted to share this. Now we're gonna start going into the actual beer tinting, okay? So protocols are very, very, very important in order to achieve the proper um, effect of what you wanna do in the service we, service. we know that protocols need to be followed because each brand or each company can have their own uh, protocols that work for their system, right? So let's start going into our consultation. Okay, so very, very important, just the same way you would be doing your lash tinting, your brow tinting, any of those services from Refectisil, maybe even a lash lift or lash curl, the same should be done for your male clientele when they're coming in for a, a beard tinting. Ask some questions. Ask them how long has it has it been since your beard was tinted or styled? Uh, what bothers you about your current beard? What would you like to change? Because this is how you're going to then create that service for them because you know what they're looking for. Then close questions, has your beard ever been shaped or colored? Are you ready for your new beard styling by Refectisil? And very, very, very important, which a lot of people or a lot of professionals forget to do, which is uh, extremely important because you get to see if your client might be allergic or has some allergic reactions to the uh, colored dyes and the oxidant together mixed is the patch test. So even for your male beard tinting, because you're reaching more canvas of the skin, uh, you're, you're, you're applying a wider canvas, the tint, right? So there's more... Um, parts it's going to be reaching on the face, you want to do that patch. It's very, very important. So while they come in, and once again, just like the same thing, if you've watched any of the past webinars, 48 hours is needed for a patch test. So they need to come in before the actual service. You need to go through the consultation with them. Here's an example up here that I put of our consent form, which after the webinar will be sent to you. And you can cater it uh, as a file that you can fix, put your logo in there and change it, change it up. But these are questions you want to ask so you might have to cater a little bit to your to beard beard uh, tinting um, but get while they're filling this out get your colors mix that you're going to use on your client with your um, oxidant mix it do your patch test in the inner forearm forearm of your client or behind their ear a couple of minutes wipe it off send them uh, home after you finish all this consultation and filling in the consent form and getting them to sign the consent form, uh, then, then you get them to go home, you call them in 48 hours, everything's good, no reactions, then they're able to come back in and do this service. You do not want to proceed the same day, um, the patches and the service in the same seating because it, you don't want to find out that they're allergic to it during your process. Uh, that can be damaging to their skin and not a happy client, okay? So always do those patch tests 48 hours before the actual service. Color typing. So the majority of the colors you're going to be using on the beard, because uh, it might not be too, too much customizing as the brows if you wanted to create the purples or the pinks or the reds. But here you're going to be using mostly your light brown, your natural brown, your black, and your graphite. So if you have a client who has beards that are soft brown shades, you're gonna use the light brown. And depending on how long you leave the light brown to, it can reach a medium shade, like it can get darker. So always uh, uh, get your timings correct, and we're gonna to go to the next slide after to see the timings. For your cool and ashy shades, uh, you want to use graphite, because graphite will counteract that brassiness, that redness, and give um, that coolness look as well. But if they're straight, if they're, uh, beard is straight, cool, and ashy to begin with, then you're going to use the graphite. For dark brown shades, you're going to use the natural brown. And once again, this can get pretty dark when you're leaving it uh, on a longer timing. So if they don't ex want their brows, their beard to be too dark, follow the timing that will go through to the next slide. And then for intensive black shades, use pure black. If you're going to use pure black, I usually, the beards that I, because I love tinting beards, I do a lot of trade shows, I don't 
personally use straight black unless the client really wants that definition. I like to take my black and mix it into my, with my browns, my black and my brown together to give that darkness, to give that depth, but not um, to be too pop popping, like too much excessive darkness, okay? So let's go now to your mixing. So if you're going to want to uh, cool down your your customer's beard because they have um, a lot of uh, warmth in their beard and our browns do have warmth as well in them, you want to, on a mixing ratio of one to one, mix your graphite and your natural brown. So the numbering system on all our tints, I know you might not see the color name, but 3.1 and 1.1, those are the, the the numbers on the color on the colors and I usually the numbers is what I usually look at and I know how to pull them out of my brow bar so 1.1 and 3.1 is your light brown and your graphite so by mixing graphite to any color you can achieve cooler ashy shades then you can take your uh, natural brown and light brown to give them a medium shade brown. So if they didn't really want it to be too light, but they didn't really want their beard to be too dark, uh, and um, they had um, no ash, I mean, no um, brassiness in their beard, no redness in their beards, beard, then you're going to use your 3.1 and your three. So you're gonna use your natural brown and your um, light brown. You're gonna mix those together, one to one ratio, which means they are equal parts. And you're going to um, achieve a nice medium shade. So now we're gonna to go to your actual application. So now that you already know what colors can suit what beard uh, type or what beard color, and then now you know how to mix the colors for the beard, now it's your preparation. So we, uh, you can use your oxidant if you want, but uh, I mean your oxidant to liquid, but I always suggest when you're doing beard tinting, use your uh, the Reflectisol Oxidant Cream uh, because it can stick better and stay better onto the onto the beard, especially if, the, if your client's sitting up as well, okay? So um, as well, uh, stick to using the peroxide, the oxidant that Reflectisol has available with their colors because it is the safest level to use around uh, the hairs on the face. It's not the same as the hair on your on your head where you can proceed with a higher peroxide, but even then sometimes it can create some overprocessing or some damage. So 3% is the safest uh, um, amount to use onto your hairs, onto your face. So, so follow that rule that you follow for your brows and your lashes. Same with for the male beard, because once again, a lot of males do have sensitivity onto their beards, and some they can't use products like just for men anymore because if they uh, get reactions from it. So we want to keep it at that low peroxide level. Okay. So you're going to mix your tint with your oxidant. Once again, equal parts. Uh, there's a suggestion here that says uh, the shorter the beard, the less product you need. The mixing ratio is always one to one, which means seven to 10 drops of oxidant cream per each centimeter of tint. Because we usually say for lashes, it's two centimeters of tint to 15 drops of cream, okay? So follow this ratio and you'll know. I know the last time I did a beard, you'll see in these, um, well, in the webinar that I did, I had used half a tube of tint with 200, 240 drops of, of um, oxidant. So it's kind of hard to count 240. So as long as your your equal parts looks equal into your into your bowl, okay? But that is a suggestion there of your seven to 10 drops per each centimeter of oxidant cream. So you're gonna follow the same preparation routines as you would your brows or your, you know, your lashes, but mostly your brows. Um, actually, in lashes too. You're going to take your Reflectisol non-oily eye makeup remover, and you're going to clean the area properly of the beard. Uh, there's a lot more canvas to have to uh, to cover, so uh, be a little bit. I don't like to use the word vigorous, but be a little bit vigorous, but gentle. Okay. To, to get through the thickness of the beard. Then after, I found that using the saline solution in my brows gives them a crisp color, so I thought might as well use the saline solution in the beards as well to give the crisp color, but also to give you that double security that nothing is in the beard that's going to prevent the tint from coloring and depositing. Uh, so even though men are not wearing generally any makeup any on their beards uh still you need to follow 
these two steps because um, still there's natural oils that come onto the beard there's sweat there's pollution and these can linger around into the hair of the beard so you want to do the non-oily make sorry eye makeup remover the saline solution is an option i love it because it gives me that security that nothing is there on the beard and here you have more hair to work with so you need that security and then um comb the hairs before beginning to apply the tint. So in the beard tint kits that some of the distributors could, will carry, there is a little um, tool that's a brush on one end, has a little bit combs, like some teeth combs, and a, a, a brush to apply on the other end. Uh, sometimes if I'm doing bigger beards uh, that have require more hairs, this tool might be a little bit small. So I go ahead and I grab a hair styling tool, the one, the brush that you use to dye your hair. So I use that to um, cover bigger canvases of beards. But on a mustache, this little tool works amazing, as opposed to using a little the little brush for your um, lashes. So your mustache, when we're going back to the racial theory, your mustache is about four centimeters of tint. Your three-day stubble would be about six centimeters of tint, and you have the images there to show the degree of hair you be or coverage that you'll be reaching and then for a long beard half half the tube okay light brown and graphite apply the cream with short brisk strokes covering the hair you can also touch the skin as those tints will cause no stin skin staining natural brown and black apply the cream with short brisk strokes covering the hair work precisely and try not to touch the skin as those tints can cause a soft skin staining if I already did my patch test and um, they were okay and didn't have any sensitivity and they want a little bit of that staining onto portions of their hair that were a little um, sparse, that's fine. Uh, but make sure that you know that they weren't uh, having any allergic reactions to the um, to the tint. Also, if there's a beard that has a lot more spaces, a lot more um, uh what's it called again it's it's spotty um you have to make sure too that even if you're applying the tint there you will have to afterwards soften a little bit and i don't use a tint remover i just use a little bit of wet cotton pad just to soften it so it blends better with the hair and it doesn't look like a patch okay on the skin so you'll notice that and then all you have to do is just uh blend it out with the wet q-tip Here's some videos that show the preparation. Sorry about the video, it was a little bit of a while ago. I need to do an updated um, beard uh, tutorial. So here we're just showing dip prep work, which is nothing magic. You just use your uh, non-oily eye makeup remover and then optional saline solution. Try it with a saline solution. I, I get better results. There's the brush I was talking about that comes in our beard tinting kits. One end, had, one, of the, um, one end has like little combs and the other end is your brush. So you can brush it before as well. Brush the beard before to release anything that might be in there. In this video, I made a little bit of a joke because my model Anthony had eaten the Subway. So I just said, you know, sometimes you might have a little bit of like some food stuck from your Subway into your beard. So you want to clean it out. But you, you don't know what could get trapped in there, lint, whatever, so, some things from day to day life. So we uh, need to brush it through and then do your uh, non oily eye makeup remover and saline solution. And then afterwards, I brushed it out again just to kind of separate those hairs so they flow apart each other not clumped together so I can get good distribution okay and then in this video is our mixing and for Anthony here he had tricolors so he had some little bit of uh, white hairs he had some reddish hairs and then he had some like black to like brown to black kind of hairs so I mixed the black with the graphite and the natural brown together for his beard and in this video, in these uh, tutorials, I'm only applying it on one side of the beard so that uh, when I was doing this live webinar, they could see the um, difference of the results. Now, I'm also very careful if you feel like you want to do protection cream to outline around the um, area. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but all around here, if you want to keep that crisp. See, I, I'm pretty good at cleaning it up afterwards, but you could pr provide protection uh, cream all around the area here of the skin that you don't want it to go so that the beard stays crisp and shaped, 
Okay, but what I do is I usually apply the tint and then I go back with the Q-tip and give it a clean line, just like you would do with your brows. Okay, so I'm applying it in nice strokes um, to get that even distribution. I do tend to go even the opposite direction as well because to, if the hairs are the hairs are much different on the beard, on the men's beard, they're coarser, they're a lot more. So if I go against the uh, opposite direction too, I can get it in there and I can get even distribution and get make sure all the hairs have been covered. Okay, so as you see, as we're getting more to the center part of his uh, beard under his lip area there, you can see that they're a little bit more whiter and lighter brown. So it didn't give him a uniformed um, look with all these uh, different colors. And sometimes what happens if your beard might have these colors or have a little bit of the white in it, it might not give you that youthful look and you might want to have that freshness and um, even make your the skin, your eyes pop. Uh, Getting it all uniform, the beard gives a total look, just like the brows and the lashes for a woman give her that total look, frame her face. The beard's going to do the same thing for your um, male clientele. So here I'm just uh, applying it on. It's, I'm not quite sure if you really want to see the. Let me just uh, fast forward it to see if I did do a picture. Yeah, so there we go. So I just take a Q-tip and areas that I feel, I clean around the lip area if I if I um touch the skin there because as well if they already had a grooming to begin with if they already had their shaping done um i want to keep into that form another shaping so i don't want to ruin that shape with distributing tint everywhere where it shouldn't be okay so pretty easy and it's pretty fun because you're working with a bigger canvas so if you're an esthetician and not necessarily a hairstylist this will excite you a little bit to work with bigger canvases of hair okay Oh, we already saw that. We want to go to the next page. There we go. Application time is very important to know. So if you're using your light brown, your 3.1, then to give to create the soft shades, then it's going to be 10 minutes, okay? Because once again, the hairs are very thick. So we need that 10-minute uh, 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 sorry, we need that 10-minute uh, time for the tint to be on the hair. Then, if you're going to work to the more of the ones that we said, the cool tones uh, with the graphite, once again, 10 minutes. Now that you're reaching to the darker colors, your natural brown, because it can get pretty dark, and your black, which immediately gets really dark when you apply it. Um, these ones are going to be half the time, so they're going to be uh, five minutes. So these can cause uh, staining of the skin if they're left longer. You know, we don't want to create that too much of that staining of the skin because it might make the um, skin irritated, but also it might look blotchy instead of it being uniformed with the, the beard. So start at five minutes. Uh, if you have those, if you're using the darker colors and you apply it on and you're not quite sure, um, I always remove, just like I do with my brows, I remove one brow and I show it to my customer and say, is this okay? Do you want it to be darker? And then I go back on, I apply more tint. You can do the same thing with a section on the beard. You can take it off um, and then um, I would go first with the darker part. If they had that tricolor, so for example, my model Anthony, he had that um, lighter in the front um, and darker on the sides. I know the lighter one might need a little bit more time if there's white to grasp. So I would take off the shade of the darker area show them that they're like it's okay then I know the rest of the timing I have to leave on to match the rest of the beard okay so take it off show them get your customer involved and then it's only a section and then you can you would always have some leftover tint that you can go back and apply and touch up and I do that during my timings I actually do have a little bit more of tint left into my bowl like uh, because I like to do a little touch up. So after I apply it all and I set my timer, I go back and just see or see the areas that needed more saturation because the hairs were thicker there or the hairs were coarser or stubborn or whiter and they needed that uh, more more uh, distribution. So I go back and I do little spot checks. So so if you, here's a tip that if you want the darker, the results to be darker, it's obviously the longer the application time would be. Um, and then when you're removing it, always have, because you're working with a bigger uh, canvas right now, 
of hair. It's not brows where you can use a cotton swab. You might be going through a lot of cotton swabs <laughs> for a beard. So I always have a small bowl with some warm water in it and a towel um, to, to remove the, the tint. And then with the towel, after I've cleaned it all up, then with the, with the, if you want a paper towel, I show it in the video. If you can take a paper towel and do a little like uh, spot checks, like soften the area if you want. If it was too dark for your customer and they were complaining because sometimes it can be a little bit too dramatic too for them, the darkness because they had a lot of whites in their hair, then you need to always have on stock with you, on hand with you, uh, the tint remover, the Refectisol tint remover to soften any darkness. And the same thing goes for brows. If you're tinting brows as well, have the tint remover because I get calls where uh, they'll be complaining, oh, my customer said it was too dark and I've tried water and it won't come off. The tint remover will help soften that color, okay? But when you monitor your timing as well, you avoid that uh, part of having to sit there and scrub uh, the tint off. Okay. And I believe we have, oh, shoot. No, we don't want that. I don't know why this is happening, Natasha. Okay, now it moved. It was a screen popping. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here you're going to see the removal. Okay, and I have a towel. Usually a black towel is a little bit better, but I'll have a, a, a towel. I have a bowl beside me with some warm water and all I'm doing is just, it was a really short video. I was just showing, I'm removing the tint and you could already see the beautiful result. And here you can see the difference, okay? And you can even go higher to their sideburns here, all the way up here, okay? And you can see the difference that it's done. Even already, just on this side, when I look at the clients, like the model's uh, eyes, they pop out more on this side as opposed to this side because you're, the focus of the eyes are not there because you can see the beard with all these different uh, colors going on on there. And also the skin gets warmer, gets a little bit of a warmer look. So yes, for male grooming, this is an amazing service that you could add on. I'm gonna just play that again if you wanna see the, um, the difference of the uh, be uh the half and half of the beard and even if we did a little bit of touch up of his brows too just a little, little bit of touch up and a little bit of grooming even though that could have been an amazing um uh difference right still looking very manly but un more uniformed okay okay so let's Go to the beard care, very, very important, as I mentioned. Even when you do your lashes, your tinting, your, your uh, brows tinting, you need to give an aftercare because just like you go to the hairdresser, you get your hair colored, and a lot of hairstylists might be on this webinar or uh, barbers, barbers. You know, you wash afterwards the hair with um, water and shampoo, but if they need a little bit of a care because the treatment that you gave them uh, was a processing, you know, you process their hair by color, you want to give them a little bit of a conditioning, hydration, so you're going to apply the conditioner. And maybe even afterwards when you're going to style their hair, you're going to give them a little bit of a, sh of a spray, of a shine or something like that. So with your uh, styling gel, you want to do the same thing that you use, you use this on your brows and your lashes onto the beard because it was processed and it's going to um, also hydrate the hair, protect the hair, seal in the treatment of the beard that you that you just did, the beard treating that you just did, so you can seal in the treatment and give a nice gloss and smoothness to the hair as well. So don't forget to apply that with a disposable mascara wand, apply it all over the, uh, the beard or the mustache that you did, okay? It's got uh, vitamin E, D-panthenol, and glycerin, which will provide long-lasting moisture and prevent dry or brittle hair. As I mentioned, protects and seals and seals seals in the service, which is important. Any special tips? We did brush up on this at the beginning, but if your customer has brown hair but his beard is slightly reddish tint, uh, sorry, reddish tinted with refractive cell number three point one light brown. So this is a subtle shade of brown that makes the beard not really dark but counteracts the red, red, reddishness. But if you find that it doesn't counteract as much as we can see in this image in the before and after 
the client does have a little bit of red tone in his hair so this is perfect for them the light brown you see how even dark it got just for being a light brown and i'm sure that was after five minutes uh, that it was left on but you still have that uniform warmth look that matches their hair color but if their hair color per se was cooler and and light but cooler and you need to use a light brown but they bring out a lot of redness then you would have to introduce your graphite okay at equal parts Great coverage. So if your customer has a black beard with grayish hair tinted with Reflectisil number one pure black, and it should be able to grasp all the, uh, sorry, all the gray hairs. Uh, you can apply the tint to the whole beard or just on the gray spots so that you can have that blending, okay? For covering gray hair, an application time of 10 minutes is needed. The skin might be slightly stained after the application, and then that's when you need to use your tint remover. Right? And our number one is our black. But if we go to the next slide, sometimes the gray coverage might not be fully achieved. So uh, the color might not grasp at all, and you still see that the the like almost like a highlights kind of. You still see that gray hair popping through or in sections. So no worries, we can pre-soften that hair structure. For on the beards just like we would do on our brows so when we were teaching the custom coloring for brows in one of the webinars and we wanted to do all these color mixed colors like their cotton candy pink and their purple and if their brows are dark or black you can't lift that and you can't show those colors so you'd have to um uh, strip away the color with our blonde brow but also in a lot of clients they have in their brows they have those gray stubborn bristly white hairs so you'd have to pre-soften those brows for about three to five minutes so we're going to do the same thing with our brow with our beards so you're going to mix your uh your your blonde brow paste with your Reflectisil 3% Oxygen Cream. Only with the cream you mix the blonde brow and that is about two centimeters of the not tinting it's the, your oxidant cream that should say uh the blonde brow so two centimeters of your blonde brow to 23 to 25 drops of your oxidant cream you're going to mix it so at the beginning it's going to look a little bit clumpy just keep mixing it until it becomes that grainy uh paste once it becomes that grainy paste you're good to go you're going to apply it um with the uh, pre-softening of the bleaching paste you can't really start spot checking like the like we talked about in the slide before with the black color that you can put it on spot checks like spot areas of the beard that have that white hair with the blonde brow you'd have to uh, pre-soften the whole beard so you'd have to apply it on the whole beard pre-soften that's why it only needs three minutes just to break down that that to soften that that hair structure so that it could be more uh, um, recepting of the uh, of the accepting of the um, color that you're going to apply afterwards okay so next you're going to apply the desired tint the, tint the tinting time will vary uh, from the original time since we just performed a bleaching so uh, i would say check at three minutes to see because because you bleached you won't need to leave it as long as five or ten minutes so that's why i say at three minutes check to see that the color has grass because the hair uh the hair has been stripped the color has been stripped so the hair follicles are ready to accept that tint right away so uh, monitor that monitor that don't leave it as the original times because then the tint will be extremely the beard will be extremely too dark for your client desired look okay here, if you go to these um, YouTube videos, you can quickly see these videos. Um, they're not like step by step with prep and this; it goes straight into the to the tinting. But just to see how the application is being done on these two different types of customers and uh, models, and it can help you give you a little bit more um, insight. Now we want to go into shaping and. Uh, we did the tinting. We want to talk about shaping, but here we're now talking about uh, brows. How can we introduce? We're talking about male grooming, so it's not just the beards; it's their brows as well. So why not? Men too can use a little grooming to accentuate their eyes and give um, some freshness to their face. Not so sorry about that. About the spelling error in there. Uh, so shape and color in one application with these strips, and these strips are also good too to use, so you don't overly do the shape overly um say by 
if you're shaping freehand with a wax and you had that oh shoot too much wax i oh i pulled out too much hair and for a male clientele they usually don't really want that much hair removed they still want that thickness but in a more groomed um uh, shape so these brow styling strips also have uh, help you to be able to position the brow properly to where it should start where it should end where the arch should be and for men a little slight not an extreme arch so these brows can be positioned lower not as high to create an arch but lower onto the brow to give a little bit of uh, of an arch so once you've placed these in the appropriate uh, area on the brow you can tint on top so they act like a little bit of a uh, stencil in a sense as a guide right then you can uh, tint the brows on the top and then you uh, wipe off the tint uh, pull off the strips and you've done a uh, brow shaping and, and coloring in, on, in under 15 minutes okay so these strips are are versatile too for men and here's the steps sorry of the the strips that are being used here it's used on a, on, a, on a female model so if you watch the videos of this one you can see the difference it has made but I've used these at trade shows on male clientele that want a little bit of a cleaning because they do a, a male clientele will have a lot more cleaning to do than when a woman comes if she's maintained it but needs a little bit of, of um, uh sorry grooming these strips wouldn't be as useful for for a man if there's a lot more hair to do a little bit more grooming these strips are really really useful and the fact that you can tint on top makes it even um faster and, and better for the service okay then we have this is our little sneak peek to our bravado gel wax this is uh a, as i mentioned a gel wax and why would it make it really good for your uh clientele um, so Quran Lab introduces a luxurious sculpting gel wax specifically designed for brow shaping and facial waxing. We're going to show you a video how this um, uh, wax can work good for when you're doing beer tinting. Um, you can confidently sculpt and contour the brows with extreme precision. But the same thing for your beards. You don't if the male if uh, if they want a specific structure to their beard, a specific shape, and they want it to be uniform, this wax will help to give that sculpting look okay it won't drip anywhere even when you want to use it on facial waxing for say um, a nose a nose waxing and they have a, a mustache right and you don't want none of that if you're using other types of hard waxes or um, and you or waxes and you put it on the nose but it's dripping from the stick and it strips onto the um, mustache and then you have a little bit of a hot mess there so with the bravado gel you have that uh, precision and no drip and no mess okay the wax will wrap around the hairs and remove the fine fluffy vellus hairs on the first pull uh, pull and then the, there we go with the features and the benefits it gives you unsurpassed control with that gel consistency and then it contains a high quality synthetic resin so uh, if you've attended any of holly's webinars if you haven't i suggest strongly to please do attend so you can see the difference between synthetic and natural waxes as natural waxes tend to cause a lot of sensitivity They're, they don't say consistent they pull the skin they change in color and smell uh, so with this high quality synthetic resin you get um less irritations for your customer for your clients and consistency um, it's a gentleness this uh, bravado gel is gentleness of a hard wax with the grip of a soft wax so it's like you have that feeling of both of a hard wax and a, a soft gel and, and a soft wax sorry and one so let's look at the oh and the it's the appearance is holographic with a sub, subtle comforting scent of honeysuckle and pear it's a really nice smell and look so when we look at this uh, video right here for the for your male clientele so say for example now you have done your beard tinting because tint uh, tint first shape after don't shape first same concept works with brows when we say to tint them first and then shape them afterwards so say here you finish doing your beard tinting and you want to now give clean all that area as you can see here some hair can grow here so it doesn't give that precise nice contouring of their their beard uh, let's watch this so you can see with the bravado. So there's no drip as it came out of the pot. It's staying consistent. It's staying in place. That's what's most important. So it hasn't dripped anywhere. And you can move that wax. So you see how she's gently moving that wax closer and closer to the area that she wants. 
it to be, okay? So for stubborn and shaved hairs, apply against and remove against, as we can see here. And so it works the hard wax, and there you go. It pulled, you can see right from the root, you can see all the hairs it pulled off with that one, one pull, okay? Of, of course, the men's hair is a little bit coarser, there's more, so you might, you'll have to go over it a second time, which is fine, it's safe enough for that to do that, okay? So that was the, oh, for that, and also if your customer has a little bit more of uh, sensitivities to, uh, to waxes in general, but also, um, with the Brilliance Hard Wax, it has that titanium dioxide in it. So when they add that titanium di dioxide, it turns to a creamy, nice um, wax, and that's going to help to reduce that redness or that sensitivity. And they did win that Dermascope Award in 2019 for uh, Best uh, Hypoallergenic um, or Sensitive uh, Wax. And it's brilliant, not brittle. So none of the Quran Lab Hard Waxes uh, break up on you, which is really nice. As you saw into that vi video, they don't get brittle and they don't break when you want to pull off because that could be not, uh, that could be very annoying when you want to pull off your hard strip and then it breaks in between and then you have to pick at it. You will not have any issues with our, with the Quran Lab waxes and the Brilliance wax, they're very um, forgiving. Okay, so if you're new at hard waxing, don't worry, pick up that Brilliance and you're going to feel like a pro. Okay, so uh, if you haven't, have a try any of these waxes. And if you haven't sat in any of the webinars of uh, our head trainer, Holly Hayes, for Quran Lab, please do. I will show at the end of this uh, presentation um, the date of our next webinar. Now we want to talk a little bit quickly, just to make sure our timing is okay for questions. We wanted to talk about uh, lift and curl. How can you introduce that to your clientele? So lash lift and curl for men can be just as beneficial as it is for the women's lashes. Uh, you can customize and create a lash look without that um, that girly look, you can't achieve that. This surface is exclusively provided for men who want to get a lift curl with a natural appeal. How to achieve that? So if they want a more natural lift, uh, I would say opt for the uh, lash lift. If they want a more natural rounded shape of their lashes, then I would say go for the uh, curl service. But if you don't want to, so depending on how natural they want it, you don't want to give them too much of that feminine look, you might need to go to a bigger, bigger pad size because we know for uh, our, our women clientele, they're looking for that drama in their lashes, right, to emphasize. But if for the male, you might, you know, I'm not going to be using a small and you, I'm going to be using a medium and you, you'll still will achieve a lift, but it will be more natural and same with the curl. As long as the hair can reach to the portions that of the of the silicone powder, the roller enough, then it's okay to go a size bigger to give them that natural look. So why not introduce this? I have lineups as well at trade shows where men are lining up for their beard tint, but also to get the curl. I use a lot of curl on the male clientele just to get in that more natural rounded look because it gives more alertness to the eyes. It gives that fresh look to the eyes. It makes the eyes pop. So because men want to have that fresh look as well and not be looking tired. Okay. So this uh, system can work as well for your male clientele. So now the final touch. So after you've done your beer tinting kit, after, sorry, after you've done your beer tinting, after you've removed the tint, after you've applied the uh, styling gel, well, here's a little uh, final touch that you want to do with our beautiful, um, it's, it's a skin protection cream, but it works as an eye mask if you're doing any eye treatments, uh, like a tinting, you can put it on this paper, protection papers and put it underneath their eyelashes, uh, on their eyes here, and then they can get a beautiful treatment with the vitamin E's and the aloe and almond oil. But you want to separate yourself differently from anybody else out there doing a beer tinting or lash services is give them a little bit of massage after their treatment. So we have some diagrams here with different types of movements, circular movements, tapping movements, straight movements. And you just spend about a minute or two giving this little service at the end of your beer tinting, lash tinting, mustache tinting, brow tinting. Uh, do this little bit at the end and you will set yourself differently beautiful hot quality service that you will give them and give them that spa experience as well okay
home care packages. So we already talked about the styling gel. So if, say, summer season's coming, the male clientele you're going to get a beard tinting on is a swimmer, uh, works out a lot, sweats a lot, and the tint doesn't last as long on their beard, uh, the styling gel would be really uh, great to use at home to maintain that color to at least last past the three up to four weeks, okay? Now, if it's something that they wanted to provide an intense, nice treatment to their to their um, beards, uh, maybe some of the areas of the beards need a little bit more nutrients, need to be, if there's a little bit patchy or just to give that thickness back to brows, the castor oil will help that. So we have our care balm here that can be used at nighttime and just to be able to bring strength and thickness back to the beard. Then you have your lash and brow booster. Uh, it's been, it's technically used on your brows and uh, to thicken them, but maybe if you're gonna do a little bit of spot checks in areas of the beard that were a little bit patchy and you might see that the hair might grow back. Uh, once again, do patch test first before you try any of these on you, test them out just to make sure that, or on your client, like your client when they buy it, they should, every product, you should do a patch test first to see but they can grow up they can for the this is the booster has been used on the lashes and the brows to bring back hair that's been missing uh, so that could work as well for the beard then we have the lash and brow bar you want to stand out from the competition out there also you want to look very organized and put together uh, when you're working on your clients and this little caddy this little lash and brow bar holds all your lash brows tinting and as well your beard tinting it has all your colors your eight colors plus your bleaching paste it has your your oxen cream your protection sorry your ox yeah your oxen cream your protection cream your tit remover your eye makeup remover your styling gel your brush your bowls but you might need to implement bigger bowls and brushes for beard tinting but this little caddy here instead of having to scavenge inside your drawers to find the colors oh am i missing this holds everything organized as well it speaks on its own on the shelf so so if you have a client that comes in and sees this um sorry sees this uh lash and brow bar but they came in maybe for another service not specifically a tinting service or or they came in for a shaping service but now you can add on a tinting service because all these refractive services are pretty easy add-on uh, uh services that you can do right so if a customer sees that they came in maybe just for shaping and they're like oh i could use a uh, uh coloring on my beard or i could use a coloring on my brows or my mustache or it can make a sale on its own so I would say it's a good impression of your customers. I would, if you don't have something like this in your salon or spa, uh, try and see if you can invest and bring it in as well if you're mobile. Uh, mobile, uh, myself, I'm mobile. So carrying this caddy around has helped me great, a great deal. Uh, the prices here may vary. These these prices vary as beers and mustaches vary in degree of length of hair that you're working on. So they're approximately. So uh, if you can get approximately 15 mustache, mustache services per tint, tint of tube, like from your tube, you're looking at about maybe a $400 revenue. But that's depending on the pricing that you're you're, you're using. So for mustache and goatee tinting, tinting, uh, Take about 10 minutes 30 to 40 dollars for beer tinting 20 minutes 65 to 75 dollars once again this will vary in your demographics where you are these are suggestions uh suggested pricing um if you can get approximately four full for uh full beer tinting services once again this varies depending on the hair growth uh, some beards can be a little bit more less thick some can be a little bit thicker as my model his beards his beard was much more thicker and i used half a tube so i could probably only do two services out of that um out of that too your revenue would be about 260 uh including include a styling and shaping uh to the beard service that uh, that you're creating so that you can have a higher cost of service right so you can have a combo so in, 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 include a shaping to um to the beard tending that you're doing to the brow tending that you're doing as well okay so that's just a suggestion do your research to to see in your area what people are offering for this as well and then it's a little uh william shakespeare quote that we put here i don't know you can read it you can, <laughs> i don't know if you want me to read it he that hath a beard is more than a youth and he that hath no beard is less than a man so it's a little bit of quote we want to put there and my thank yous for attending this webinar. If you have any questions, oops, 
my emails right there uh, for any educational questions as well, protocols, anything you need to know to help to do these services and execute them properly and enjoy doing them. That's me, we'll help you. Um, visit our Refectus Education website because all our all our videos go up there. Uh, we'll be revamping the uh, education site as well and to make it more useful for you, more accommodating to you. And then like our Rebecca Sol North America page. And I didn't put our Instagram on there. Shame on me. But uh, give us reviews on Facebook. Go follow us on um, Rebecca Sol North America on our Instagram account. Uh, anything that you um, uh, post. Uh, tag us in it. I do have my educational account as well, Broista by Reflectasil. Tag us in that as well. Show us your befores and afters. If you're going to be bringing on these services, that would be awesome. Also, the next webinar date that is incorrect. This is not correct down here, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, my next webinar is on the 18th. It's on custom coloring for uh, your brows, how to mix colors, how to bleach. So that will be on our reflectasileducation.com website. And then, as I mentioned, we have Holly as the head trainer for Quran Lab for the waxing. And her next webinar will be May 14th, Thursday, and Friday, May 15th at your 1 p.m. Eastern time. Register at the, uh, on the Instagram account at Quran Lab North America or excuse me, our website at coronalab.com. As I mentioned before, to, if you want to give that amazing male grooming service, not just male gro grooming, as well as brow service, or uh, um, just facial waxing, uh, check out that uh, Bravado Wax, but also check out all her other videos if you want to advance to more uh, fuller wax and body waxing than, and understanding the wax better, okay? And that is it. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, Natasha, sorry, how do we go back to the, uh, um, stop sharing, stop, oh, escape. I'm going to go now to our questions. Let me just find our screen here. So can everybody see back? No, not yet. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to, we're going to scroll up. Oh, scroll down. So we get some questions. You can start writing up all your questions. We're just trying to see. Okay. So question from Jesse. What if you wash the, sorry, I can't see the whole question. <laughs> sorry. What if you wash the beard with face wash rather than the Refectosil eye makeup remover? So I do not, uh, oh, you mean if you want to use face wash? If they have oil-based, these face, face washes, you won't get an appropriate coverage of your tit. So if you keep it to the system with our non-oily plus our Refectosil um, eye makeup remover has hair strengthening properties in it. So because if you're going to be using like a bleach on the, on the brows, you want the hairs to be strengthened. So I truly say keep it to the Refectosil, which is not oily. A lot of these other face cleanse, face wash might have um, oils in them, okay, and be a barrier. Uh, Tina, how do you how do you use a saline solution? I've not heard of that step before. Okay, so Tina, if you're doing your uh, – lash lift or your lash curl, we always suggest to use the um, saline solution because it degreases, removes anything that's left on there, even from the eye makeup remover, so that you have a clean canvas to work. So you would use it the same way that you would use your eye makeup remover. You would take your, you know, your cotton pad, you would put the saline solution on it, and you would just clean around. Okay, so it's just an added measure to give that clean canvas and be able to have that true color shine on their beard and to have good coverage. Okay. Uh, what if the beard is red hair? Would you mix? Yes. So as we saw in the slides, this is for Gabriella. As we saw in the slides, if they do have um, reddish in their beards, they usually don't want to see that reddish. Okay, if they really want to see the red, then you can add your red tints. But most of the case for beards is they want to get rid of that brassiness. They want to get rid of that reddish tone that's in their beards. So you would have to mix graphite with your um, with your browns. Okay, um, if you're depending on the lightness of the beard and the darkness of the beard, 
there's light brown or natural brown, and then you take your graphite and you mix it in half to half, one to one equal parts. You mix the graphite and the uh, the browns, but just make sure that when you're adding the graphite and you might feel that it might be a little bit too, too dark, uh, monitor your timing as well. Uh, Jolene, would you tint brows the same color? So is this for your male clientele? Meaning like, uh, I would suggest you add on services. Like if your male clientele is coming in for beer tinting and you notice that they could use a little bit of a, of a brow tinting to structure their face, uh, and their look, I would say, um, tint it. Now, not necessarily it would mean it would be the same as a beard, especially if the beard has a lot of warmth in it and the brows did it. But if the, if the brows do kind of match the same tone of the beard, yes, you can use the same colors and you have the tint in there. You can apply it as you're finishing the beard, you can go apply it on the brows. I would do beard first probably because beard will need to take more time, time and then the brows. So I hope that answered your question. Um, oh, where'd it go? Uh, Jolene. Yes, the models are extremely cute in this uh, presentation, Renee. Uh, what a difference. Glad, oh, I can't read it. Glad you just did one side. Yeah, I thought that would be uh, nice to see the, wow. I didn't let him go home like that. I finished the other side, but it's, it's amazing to see when you just do one side to see the difference. Like I said, he had three colors in his beard, uh, my model. So um, I'll do an updated one with better screening because we have better room, better lighting now, better camera, better everything. So I'll do uh, another one and hopefully get it posted up onto our uh, Refectus Education site so we can see more of these transformations on beard tinting. Uh, so thank you, Kelly. Uh, uh, Jesse, when you soften the hair with the blonde brow, do you wash it before tinting? Yes. So you're going to soften it with the blonde brow for that three minutes because you just want to break down that, 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 or you just, that the hair, not break down, but soften as the word says that hair color, that hair, that gray hair. And you want to, and it, once it's softened in that three minutes, it doesn't need much longer. If the degree of the thickness, if you feel like you got to leave it maybe another minute for sure, but usually in that three minutes, it will do it. And then you wipe it off uh, with a dry cotton swab or you can wet it slightly. I like to remove, actually I like to remove the blonde brow with the eye makeup remover. So I would take the eye makeup remover and remove the uh, blonde brow because once again, it's got amino acids in it. It's got a lot of uh, hair strengthening uh, properties, vitamins, uh, minerals, sorry. So it would help to uh, use that afterwards. If not, then you can use a, a sorry a wet cotton pad to remove the blonde brow, and then you're going to deposit the color. But make sure that the beard is dry before you deposit the the color. Okay. So I hope that answered your color. Lynn, do you apply the blonde to all the hairs if the whites are here and there? Yeah, as I mentioned before. Sorry, thank you. As I mentioned before, you should be doing that. You should be doing the covering the whole, just like with the brows. Some people have asked me, can I just spot check the brows and put the blonde paste on just sections of the brows I have the uh, white hair? If you do that, uh, it's still going to be touching hairs around that area, and you're still going to get that discoloration, right? So when you go and apply the the new color of the tint, you're going to have almost like a highlighted look. So same with the brow, just cover the whole canvas. It's only three minutes of the of the softening time, and then you can uh, remove it. At the same time, just monitor how they're feeling. Ask them, are they feeling, because in areas where there's no hair or less hair, avoid that, because you don't want it touching uh, a lot of their skin, because they can feel a little bit of that tingling. But uh, I hope I answered your question on that. Uh, Bianca, what about aftercare for brow tinting? How do you decide whether or not to use blonde brow? So what about aftercare for brow tinting? Uh, well, we said the same thing. You're going to use the uh, the products that we mentioned, the styling gel. You're going to use a styling gel to seal in the surface, to hydrate it, and then you're going to uh, use um, at home and with them a... Um, what's it called, the castor oil, if you want to give them a little bit more of a hydrating. Now, if you did a beard tinting and you and they're going to be using any of these products afterwards, like your styling gel or your uh, castor oil, uh, wait 24 hours. Any oil products, wait 24 hours, so it just doesn't break down the tint, okay? And then how would you decide whether or not to use Blonde Brow? If the beard has a lot of gray, white, if it's a subtle, subtle gray hair, 
the tint will cover it. That's why we said use black, right? Because I've done that with brows where the hairs, the, there was white hairs there, but they were very soft. There was gray hairs there, but they were very soft. And I can cover, cover it with the tint. But when they start to become very bristly, very wiry, that's when you have to use the uh, blonde brow uh, the, because they won't grasp the color. Which kit lift versus curl sets? Which one is more dramatic? Uh, each are dramatic in their own. Oh, the last question I didn't get. Sorry, Natasha, you're ahead of me. Sorry. <laughs> the each kit, there we go. Each kit on their own gives a dramatic result accordingly, right? So if they want a dramatic rounded look on their lashes, where it curves into a C look, then you would use the curl. If they wanted more of a lift where the lashes go L-shaped and straight up, then you would do a lift. So depending on what look they're looking for, okay? Oh, there wasn't, oh, that's it? Okay, so I hope I answered that question. Uh, thanks so much, very informative. Love the brow bar. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, if you can uh, invest in it, purchase it, you'll love working out of it. Trust me, and it looks beautiful. What is expiring dates on this product? So our tints, Diana, our tints expire uh, after opening are 12 months uh, and our solutions too. So when you look at the back, so for example here, uh, it's going to be hard to see it, but there's a little icon of a cosmetic dish with a number in it. So this one says 12 months. So this is our eye makeup remover. So after it's been opened, after 12 months, uh, it's expired. And our tints have the same thing. They have a little bit of an image. Once again, it's going to be hard to see it, but there's a little image in the corner there of the uh, cosmetic jar with the number 12 in it. So after 12 months, okay? Oxidant, same thing. It is 12 months, okay? Our, so, Samantha, are clients with long, thick, very dense beards still ideal for beard tinting? I'm thinking about how to apply tint to the dense hair. Would tint just be painted over top of the outer layer of the beard? So if... This is another thing too you have to be mindful is if the beards are getting extremely too thick and too long, it might not be useful using the tinting service because it's a lot of product that you'll have to use. Um, if the beard's shorter and denser, so like my model, his uh, beard wasn't long. It was, you know, up onto his uh, chin like this, but it was pretty dense. I just made sure I went back and I used my brush and I went in opposite directions. I went underneath his beard and, and during that, I left the beard on him for about 10 minutes. During that 10 minutes, sorry, the tint. I left the tint on him for about 10 minutes. So during that 10 minutes, I went back and I did spot checks. And I go back in, I fill areas and I go once again against the hair growth. So you should be able to, to, to work okay on dense hairs, but when they get very long, it's kind of hard to be doing that. It's almost, requ almost required like a hair color dye service for the beard when it becomes that long, okay? Does the blonde brow bleach the color of the hair or does it only open the follicles? So it will lighten the hair, obviously. It will, uh, because it's breaking down the bonds, it will lighten the hair. So that's why we only say three minutes, nothing longer than that. So they don't get too, too light because then the tint that you apply, the color might, it will be too dark, okay? Bianca, what about, oh, we did this one. Uh, thank you, Colleen. Uh, Christine, can you apply tint after you have done a lash lift or curl, but before you take the glue lashes off the roller pad? Okay, so this is specifically a brow, uh, uh, sorry, um, a lash question. For the rollers, you have to remove the lashes regardless. You can't tint on the rollers. For the silicone uh, pads, you can tint on after you've uh, removed the solution and the the hairs are still in the silicone pad, you can tint on top of there, okay? Uh, Kesha, I have a question for a majority, all white beards, what would be the best tint color to use? I would suggest the graphite, if they wanna keep that uh, cool cool look for the for the white, I would do the uh, graphite and just monitor the, monitor the timing so it doesn't get too dark. So it will give that cool illusion still with the white. Um, so Gabriella, for half a tube, I had just a count to see how many I'd had to use, but it was about 240 drops. So ideally, it's just looked that it's equal parts, that the solution and the lick and the tint looks um, equal amount, but it was 240 drops for half a tube. Yeah. 
Uh, Lori, after the beer tent application, can you use a comb to brush through for more even distribution or would that move around and not be a good idea? So, um, okay, so yes, you can try and brush through it if you feel like, but I would go back and put the tint again. Like if you want just to comb through it to give it a little bit of evenly distribution, but then when you look back at it and it feels that you might need to apply more tint because part of it came off onto the brush, you can do that. But I don't find it, I find it it's okay to give it a good brush, but um, don't go over it too many times because you are rolling off the tint as well from the hair that's getting put into the comb of the brush, right? So that's why I tend to do it before I wipe it and then after I wipe it. I never had any issues of doing it during, uh, brushing during the tinting service, okay? Uh, Sorry, what is the proportion of the product to mix? So we had that slide up there. The presentation is going to come to you automatically with the slide, but we said about seven to drop seven to ten drops of oxidant per one centimeter of tint. So you're going to have that uh, this presentation sent to you, so you have all your protocols. Uh, Heather, okay. Oh no, that wasn't Heather. That was uh, somebody else. Sorry. Uh, Heather, where can we purchase a lash bar? So Heather, uh, if you send an email to my um, email, we can get to you the uh, the closest um, distributor to you that's selling the um, lash and brow bar. So I can type it in at the end of this presentation. I can type it in again, but it's Refectosil dot education at cbongroup.com and we can find the closest distributor to you. Wendy, does the blonde brow bleach the color of the hair or does it open the follicle? Has been sent for moder oh, I don't know if that sorry has been sent for moderation. So uh, if we're only trying to leave it at for three minutes only just to soften that hair follicle so that it's more receptive. It takes in that color. You might see that the hair gets a little bit lighter, obviously in that three minutes, but very minimal. Okay, that it would get lighter. Uh, the longer you leave it, the more you'll start seeing that bleaching effect. Uh, Colleen, we've always we have always used oxidant to clean hair of oil. I'm trying to see. Are does this mean to do your to do your cleaning of the hair because uh, the oxidant is to used to mix with the color to help the color to oxidize and help it to penetrate into the hair shaft. So I'm not quite sure what your question was there, but you can remind, you can let me know again, Colleen. Uh, aftercare, we mentioned the styling gel, we mentioned the um, uh, castor oil, and if they want to use a growth booster, uh, castor oil will help with that too, will help with the hair of the beard to grow again and to be thicker. So that would be ideal for a male home care, um, Bianca. Uh, is this good for six weeks? I would say four to six weeks because it also varies. Uh, you know, when you're in a shower, your men will be maybe a little bit more rougher <laughs> with, uh, uh, you know, scrubbing their beard. So uh, I would say about four, four to six weeks. I like to start it off at four, depending on how your regime is when you're cleaning your face. Christine, so we're going to have to finish up soon. And any of these questions that I wasn't able to answer, um, the email that you send me back, I, the email that I provided for you here or the email that you see when you get your uh, thank you email me back and let and, and I can answer the rest of your questions but let me just do two three more and then we're we can we'll have to end this a lot of questions uh, if you need to apply the blonde brow to open hair follicles on a dark beard when the tint wears off after six ish weeks will the natural hair be lightened on them it won't look no because you're only leaving it for three minutes just to soften the hair so they won't you won't see that lightning effect happening so you won't have that issue so I hope that was what was answered I hope that answered your question um, can you comb we already went through that one I oh, we did that after I, I mentioned I, we talked about that after if you can comb through it for even distribution we already mentioned that one uh, I use the white Quran lab hard wax but find it does break sometimes am I not a Applying it thick enough. Um, you might have to go a little bit thicker, but that's a, a Holly question. Uh, I don't have a breakup on me at all. I wasn't a hard wax user and I started using the Brilliance hard wax and it never breaks up on me. So it might be, we have our, our Brilliance hard wax and we have a Brazilian hard wax. The Brazilian can go on thinner, much thinner. The Brilliant, Brilliance will have to go a little bit thicker and make sure the consistency, the temperature, if it's too cold, then um, 
it might be breaking on you. If you don't have a core in the middle, you need a, a hard core in the middle and a little bit runnier on the outside, you need to pick up from both. So I have not experienced that, so it's probably technique and heating. So um, we can uh, send that to Holly as well if, you have, if you've tried and you have issues again. Uh, we can connect with Holly and help you out. So let me know. Yeah. So is using oxidant wrong before tint? You shouldn't use the oxidant before do cleaning. You should use the oxidant just to do your mixing with your tint. You need to use your eye makeup remover and your uh, saline solution if you if you feel like you wish. So not the oxidant. We don't use the oxidant for cleaning for prepping. Are the May 14th and 15th strength and waxing skills the same webinars? Yes, just different days as we're reaching more capacity, more people are wanting to watch our webinars. So holding two, two classes helps to reach everybody. So yes, you have a consent form. You will get that at the end of this. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get a consent form at the end of this as a thank in your thank you email, and you can customize it to your beard, but it's a standard one that we use for lash lift, lash curl, brow lift, okay? Um, so once again, we've answered that one. That's weird, they're getting, I guess, oh, re, 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 uh, Okay, so because we have to end right now, we have a lot of questions. I'm going to type in, oh, can we type it in? Where's the, oh, here? All right, in here, perfect. I'm gonna type the email because I want to be able to answer everybody's questions. It's hard on a one hour uh, webinar. So give me one second. Oh, I can't see the Okay, so let's see if I type that one right. This is the email. So it's refectasil, uh, dot education at cbungroup.com. And I put it in the message there so you should be able to see it. Any questions I wasn't able to answer today, please send me the email. You will be getting a consent form and the presentation at the end of this at the end of this uh, webinar, e email to you automatically. But any other technical questions you have, please uh, contact me and we will be able to help you and assist you. I really appreciate it that we had a really good attendance today, hence with all the questions. Um, and I appreciate the support that you give as well for watching our webinars. I uh, The feedbacks that you give me are awesome because as well as a presenter, if we have to do anything to change, uh, if we're not getting the message across or if we're not helping you in the way that you should view I need to get that review as well to be able to um, to assist you so I hope uh, sorry I hope that everybody ha has a good day today and I hope that everybody is who is resuming back to their businesses are reopening everything goes well follow the proper protocols you know with the state your state or your provincial guidelines for infection control um, and I hope everything goes well for your business. I want everybody, if you're able to attend again, any of the future webinars, awesome. As I mentioned on Monday, the 18th, I will have a custom coloring and it's a repeat because a lot of people really enjoyed that webinar on how to bleach your brows and how to create different colors and how to mix. So we'll have that one as well on Monday and future webinars for um, June. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank you, Renee. Thank you everyone for being here today. And, and enjoying the webinar. So have a beautiful day. Bye.